How's it going? Can you hear me? There we go. Sorry. Welcome to Bothering the Band. I'm here with, what do you go by? William? Ryan? Ryan. We're, Just we're Ryan? friends. You can still call me Ryan. <laughs> yeah. I'm Ryan as well, so that's perfect. Right on. Um, anyways, the, again, thank you so much for doing this. Um, everyone, you'll know Ryan um, initially from Yellow Card, but he's doing some great solo stuff lately um we were both listening to it and uh, man love it great stuff thanks, dude thank you very much yes. um thanks for having yeah me. I'm, I'm working on uh i'm getting even kind of farther away i guess we could say um I, i'm really working on getting into scoring for film and tv um with the hopes that that's my can become my full-time gig and uh so i don't i don't know how much like you know singer songwriter type music i'll be releasing anymore just because i I'm, i've really got my sights set on this this thing so um all right i've gotten to do some cool stuff already and have a couple of really cool opportunities on the horizon so i'm having a blast making music is the point though you know are you allowed to divulge any shows or movies you've worked on i scored a movie last summer that's that it's a pretty pretty small indie film a friend a friend of mine I was a writer producer on it and it was just a really good opportunity to, to do my first feature. Um, I work, I work with Ryan Mendez, who is the, the lead guitar player for yellow card. Uh, we, we are like kind of a writing duo. Uh, so we do everything together. Um, film's not out yet. It's still like getting, going to festivals and stuff. So I don't, I don't really know what's up with it, but, um, we are, unfortunately the thing I would love to tell you about, I can't tell you about yet. Um, <laughs> we're, we're in like the very early stages of what could be like the biggest break in our scoring career. So we're, but it's all like in the, a it's full, it's full on it's lockdown. Yeah. So, um, it hasn't That's quite cool. gotten a full green light yet, but it's very close. So I'm my, my hopes are up for sure. Can you tell us the name of the indie flick? Um, it's called dinner party. Okay. Uh, and I just, but as far as like where it's going to be available to watch and stuff like that, I just have no idea yet. Um, but it, it was great. It was, it was really fun. Um, very conversational film. So um, it was re really up our alley doing just kind of the like ambient kind of neoclassical stuff that we do. Mm -hmm. um, so it was really cool. Really fun. I'll have to keep a lookout for it. I can't wait to, uh, I don't know, whenever it comes out, six months, a year, I'll be like, hey, that's yeah. who knows with movies. It could be five years. I don't know. It's crazy. Yeah, for real. Um, all right. You ready to dive into these silly questions? Yeah, man. Let's go. Okay, here we go. Did you ever play soccer growing up? I did, my whole life as a kid. Really? Yep. I was uh, actually just going through a stack of photos that my mom gave me with last time I was down in Florida uh, a couple months ago, and uh, there there was a picture in there of me at like probably age four or five, something in my soccer gear. Oh, that's right. I forgot you are you is, are your is your mom still in Jacksonville? Um, yeah, my parents both. Yeah, they're they're in Jack's Beach. That's so great. Um, uh, both me and my producer are from Orlando originally. Oh, right on. Cool. Florida. <laughs> yeah. Um, all right. So this is perfect segue for the next question. It's a true or false question. Okay. Uh, Jacksonville is the largest city in the world area wise. False. False. It's the largest city land mass wise in the continental U.S. Anchorage, wow. Alaska is bigger. Wow, good I believe. Answer. Yeah, I think I'm right. Could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure it's in the in the lower 48. It's the biggest, but that the city limits of Anchorage are bigger than the city of Jackson. It's huge, though. Jacksonville is huge. Yeah. Like growing up, it was like just normal to drive 45 minutes to go over to a friend's house. It's huge. I'm going to have to uh, punch my friend Joe now for uh, telling me that 10 years ago and making me believe it. <laughs> I mean, again, look it up. Do your research. I could be wrong, but I'm almost positive. It's definitely not in the world. Definitely yeah. not. Um, okay. Uh, how many keys do you have on your keychain? None. Is I mean, I, key fob, does that count for your car? Yeah. Yeah. So I have, okay, that's it. I have my car key fob. I don't, I don't, you don't use have a like a house key. key? No, I have key, keep, I use the keypads or my phone. Oh my God. I live in the future like that. What's it like in the future? <laughs> it's cool. I, I like it here. You and you know what? It's convenient that you're asking me this question right now because I had my car in 
uh, for some stuff. And that's why the house key is not on there right now, like as of today. But it's been like probably three weeks now and I haven't put it back on. So like I haven't missed it. But if I get locked out of the house or like, you know, the batteries die in my lock, I guess I'll be bummed. So I should probably put it back on the keychain. Honest question, honest answer. Right now, I have one key on my keychain. <laughs> I'm so envious of you. My keys are like just giant bulk in my pocket. I hate it. I like wish I, I have could. keys for shit, but they're like in places, you know? Yeah. So what would you do if the batteries died? Would you have to like break it? I, I don't I don't know. I guess I'd call a locksmith, but more the easy answer is I'll I'll be putting that key back on my keychain now that we've had this conversation. I'm going to remind you before Thank we you. <laughs> I appreciate the help. Um what's your favorite Denzel flick? Ooh. Great question. Training Day, probably. All right. I'm big fan of Glory too though. Glorious, great. Fan. So good. One so Oscars good. for both of those. Yes. Yes, he did. Supporting that is, that is... and lead. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah. Training Day, though, I think probably that 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 film is so rewatchable. Like you could just throw it on anytime and it's like, oh, yeah, this this movie's cool as shit. Yeah. It's so good. Definitely. At any moment, too, in that flick, you can just you're like, oh, yep. I guess I'm watching this today. <laughs> I know for sure. For sure. Yeah. Can't look away. From that movie. Did you see his new one on HBO Max? Little thing. Nope. I I was. I'm a I'm a big film person, obviously. So I have a lot of friends who are film people, and I I was told to stay away at all costs. So I didn't even because it's it. bad or yes. I was told it's it's real. I, it's, it's a real bummer. I think it's pretty good, but it's uh it's pretty scary at first. I I I just heard that it was like um, well the script is from like from the 90s and it just mm -hmm. never got made. So I heard that it kind of could have felt like throw a 90s throwback movie but that they said it now and it just sounds like a 90s movie like the script and that it was like trying to be seven but it just wasn't seven yeah all right i, I don't know that now i don't know i, I don't always go by the rotten by the tomato meter on rotten tomatoes i know that can be rigged sometimes but when it's super low and like people i know are saying don't then i feel like it's right on it's usually Especially if it's people you respect. I have a, a yeah. few buddies that are like cinephiles who I'm like, okay, if they say it's good, I have to watch it. Yeah. But if like my uncle Stan says like, <laughs> oh, you got to watch this movie. I'm like, just because you gotta watch Taken even if, 7. Even if it's good because of who said it, I'm not watching. Right, right. <laughs> I, I would love to believe that I am a person in other people's lives that they turn to for that kind of advice. I hope I am. Yeah, actually, I I'm right there with you. I, I hope that people go. Yeah, that, I mean, if I need to know about a film, I'm going to ask him about it. I hope. I'm going to do that from with you from now on. <laughs> OK, you're sure. my guy. <laughs> At least I'll have you. <laughs> <laughs> we can bounce it off each other. Um, OK, this is a um, universal question. How many times can you be in love in your lifetime? Oh man. I don't I don't think there's a number to put on that one, man. You know? I've never been a believer that there's just the one thing and that's the thing. And if that doesn't work out, then you're just done. I think that's just stupid. So I mean, it'd be cool if you like met the one person and that was that was your person your entire life. And I know it happens. That'd be great. My grandparents were married for 65 years or something, 67 years. And they did like the classic stereotypical storybook. He passed, she passed almost to the day six months later. Oh, wow. So like that would be cool to have that. But yeah. I don't think that that's the end all. Like it's just the one. So I don't know. I think I think you can fall all kinds of in love. Okay. So, you know, aside from people. How many loves can you have? Hold on, but my yeah, headphone just disconnected for some reason. Do your thing. <laughs> hey, there we go. Sorry about that. You got um, it. Anyways, yeah, I don't know. Fall in love 50 times, man. Do you. I was saying also, like, aside from people, 
maybe objects or hobbies or anything how, how many loves can you have there uh, endless 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 yeah spread that yeah. love around i wanted that question to be ambiguous so like you know whatever you said was is correct you know all right all right um there's definitely a reason i wrote this but what's the worst thing you ever did in the bowery <laughs> um drugs probably <laughs> if i had to think of something like ba bad that i did there any any bad story i have in new york is is from the mid 2000s and drugs <laughs> so there you go what color drugs i'm an open book <laughs> um usually white yeah usually the white kind mm -hmm. yeah uh, that was a phase yeah i um i was probably right there with you for a little glad bit. I'm glad that phase is, is long gone yep <laughs> but good times though man good times of Being course young and yeah. dumb in new york city just great times great times yeah um this is a perfect <laughs> no rag rats <laughs> this is a perfect segue how often are you tired <laughs> always <laughs> all the time uh I'm 41 years old now that happened. So that's, that's just happening. Like I'm just cruising on into my forties and, uh, I don't feel very, I don't, I don't, I don't feel my age at all. I, I I'm still pretty active and don't have any like ailments. You know, I'm not like, Oh, my knees. When I go to, I'm yeah. like, I'm, I'm pretty good. Pretty good. Um, but sleep, as they say, as you get older, your sleep starts to suck. That's yeah. got to be my first telltale, like you're getting older thing, because I suck at sleeping now. I mean, just I just suck at it. So I kind of like do a couple hours periodically throughout the night till it adds up to like six or eight and then roll <laughs> out of bed and get going. So I, I'm, I'm tired. I'm always tired. But like, I don't feel like sickly tired. I'm just like, man, I could go to bed all day. <laughs> I'm like, man, I could go to bed right now. You're just slightly drained slightly drained yeah and I know it's just because of sleep i know it's it's uh, yeah i mean i don't know got a lot on my mind working a lot you know i'm I'm not i think i have trouble uh as many people do like i have trouble turning my brain off just at night when i when i lay down and so i'm not yeah. a big fan of of taking chemical things to make me sleep unless i absolutely have to so and you know bedtime tea or whatever like sleepy time tea can only can only go so far I love that you mentioned sleepy time tea. I yeah. have some right I now. can go get some right now. I have it. <laughs> Want to have a cup? Right <laughs> we certainly I, aren't in the Bowery anymore. I identify with that so much. Um, I actually wrote a book about how I'm just terrible at sleeping. Like some people are bad at dancing. Yeah. I just have. I'm just not good at sleeping. Like it's same, just, dude. Same. It's it's really it's really been a struggle. Yeah. Um, there's certain things like I could probably quit drinking wine might help yeah. that, that's not happening i'm not gonna do that <laughs> no melatonin okay so i do have one ailment i have one like kind of old person ailment that <laughs> i think maybe i've never really looked into it i think it may be a little hereditary because my mom has it really bad i it's way early for me to have it which is really great um but i have like that restless leg syndrome Oh. So, so like my nerves freak out in my legs at night and that that also it's really helpful when you're trying to sleep because it only happens at night when you're laying in bed like i'm not yeah. it wouldn't ever happen sitting here in the studio all day working like i'm never like ooh, my legs feel funky it's only when you lay down um so that happens and and i i think uh i've also maybe read this but either way it definitely does it to me melatonin makes it worse oh and really I, if i take a melatonin i i'm it's terrible do you ever get what i call legs. hot legs hot legs i don't know yeah i mean i'll like, kick a leg out every once in a while yeah because it's like hot you got to kick yeah, them out yeah, yeah I'm a hot <laughs> sleeper too but yeah man you don't want no part of that shit the restless leg thing it's it's awful and it's probably I, I from thought it was a myth forever until i actually like it's like saw it in person yeah, yeah. It's like you hold on as long as you can without moving them. You're like, this is gonna pass. I'm gonna sleep. I'm gonna sleep. and then you're like, Ugh. like you shake your legs. <laughs> it's the worst. It's the worst, dude. Uh, but I, 
I mean, you know, I, it's a combination of maybe being a little, like hereditary, like I said, I don't know, because I know my, my mom really does have it pretty, pretty bad too, or jumping off of drum risers and speakers and shit wearing Converse for 20 years. Like, yeah, smart no, move, bro. No support. I'm just, I'm just glad it didn't, you know, screw up my knees or whatever. Like, yeah, I can't. that's like vans, you know, it's like running in vans. Same. It's terrible. Like, why would yeah. you? I was, that was my... <laughs> every day of my life running and jumping and on concrete stages for just all all night every night like yeah i'm surprised gonna, it's gonna catch up yeah. i mean I'm, i mean i'm not I'm 40 not 50 let's we'll, we'll, we'll reconvene and i'll let you know how my knees are doing you don't look a day over 38 thank you <laughs> <laughs> that's that's i get 35 to 38 and it feels nice no you look great man um do you have kids? No kids. Um, so I have a daughter and I I have a saying that if my eyes are open, yeah, I'm tired. <laughs> so if, if it's if they're open, I'm tired. I relate. Chances are. I'm with so. you. <laughs> Sometimes I write these these questions and then I don't think about how I actually have to ask them. Um I'm ready. What kind of debit card do you have? <laughs> a Disney debit card. Are you Chase. serious? Yeah. Oh my God. It's got Darth Vader on it. That's amazing. <laughs> yeah. I never use it though. Nah. Which is kind of nice because it's got Darth Vader on it. It's like in mint condition from when I got it because I never swipe it. So, but yeah, Chase Disney debit. Oh my God. That's so much better than you saying like Visa. <laughs> I don't. I actually don't remember which, which like card carrier. Oh, it doesn't even matter. The Darth Vader thing yeah. is the best. Yeah. I good. saw like on your website you have a bunch of Star Wars stuff on your Patreon and sh and shit like that. Uh, I have a podcast that I do with Adam Russell from Story of the Year and Nick oh, okay. Marion from Bayside. So the three of us host a Star Wars exclusive podcast. Cool. I love uh, both those bands. Drops every Thursday. It's so fun. We we have a blast with it. Oh, cool. We'll put a link in the, in the bio when we, when we post. Cool. Yeah. What's it called again? Think the maker. Think the maker. Okay. Yeah. Hold on. Got to write it down. Abby, you write it down. Uh, <laughs> Thanks, Abby. <laughs> All right. Have you ever been comfortably anxious? Uh, let's go with daily on that one. Sure. I, I, uh, I've been a, a part of the um, the mental health wave in a good way. I've been really uh, spent the last couple of years really trying to fully dive in and just be better, just be a better dude, you know. And I'm lucky that I don't like struggle. I think from like things that need to be medicated when it comes to my mental health. They're all things that, for the most part, I think I'm aware of the stupid shit I do and the like reactive kind of nature I have and all the stuff that needs to get meditated out of here. But if I had to have, if I had to pick one, a mental, you know, thing, anxiety for sure. Stre stress and anxiety. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm yeah. stressed dude for sure. Well, that's um, like, uh, so yeah, I, I think daily I'm comfortably anxious. <laughs> yeah. Cause I'm not like freaking out, but I know I'm like, I know it's in there. Yeah. You know, it's up here, but at, mm -hmm. externally you're, you're, composed i'm right there with you do you have a, a certain practice that you use or like a discipline or um like I, or? I started i started meditating a year ago like this month oh um, wow congrats so like just started learning how to do that and you know like listening to podcasts and and uh reading a bit i haven't read books per se but read a lot of articles and just stuff about getting you know learning how to do it and the benefits of it um and i i'm i haven't started in on this yet but my next step i think for me is going to be journaling oh nice um uh, i have a friend who's just like crushing it at life and is like the happiest human being i know and he's doing all of this stuff and is like bro just i'm telling you it works so i'm finally not being stupid about it and i'm just trying it and it's working it's definitely working if I may, um, I'm a writer at heart. That's what I do. I teach. Um, 
I've taught people um, affected by cancer and PTSD. And the thing I always tell them is to, to write journal, like get it out, get this yeah. out of your, and so I fully support that. Yeah. And then that's, the second that's thing the next is, thing I want to get into, uh, read a guy named Thich Nhat Hanh. If you meditate, it's spelled like T-H-I-C-H. Thich Nhat Hanh. Yep, got him. Great stuff. Okay. Great practi- Great. practical stuff. Thanks, and man. I'm not even that spiritual, and it, and it connects to me a lot. So there you cool. go. Thank you. Yeah, man. Um, so I feel like I'm not being silly enough. I'm talking about meditation and journaling and. No, this is great stuff. There okay. are no, there are no right or wrong. This is All right. phenomenal, man. Um, so when's the last time you were in the ocean? Mm, probably like August or September of 2020. Which I ocean? Think. The Atlantic Ocean. <laughs> okay. Uh, I, I had a crazy, the last like 18 months have been wild for me. I live in Nashville, Tennessee. Oh, nice. uh, I've been here, for, I had been here for five years and uh, I moved back. I moved here from Los Angeles. So at the towards the end of 19, I went back to Los Angeles. I sold my house here and went back to LA with grand plans. Let's call it that. Mm-hmm. And then COVID arrived. And uh, uh, long story short, I had one tour booked in 2020 that would have allowed me to afford to live in Los Angeles because it sucks to afford to live in Los Angeles. It sucks. And then that tour was gone. So I freaked out. Talk about stress and anxiety. Um, And so I made a little pit stop back in Florida in my hometown. Um, My parents have like a rental there that I took and I was in the ocean quite a bit all summer, which was amazing. Yeah. I did sort of get to a point of like, okay, this is nice. It's nice to see my parents more than I've seen them in 20 years, but Jacksonville, like I don't have malice towards my hometown. It's just not for me anymore. Yeah. I agree. So, and I love it. I I should have never left Nashville, but, um, and I'm not, uh, everything happens for a reason type person. But that said, all the things happening and getting me back here to Nashville again, it's pretty crazy how like life was like this and this and now it's like this. So I'll take it. Let me ask you this. How do you feel about bachelorette parties in Nashville? The, you have to drag my ass kicking and screaming to be anywhere near one of those things downtown. Like, like I don't the, go the pedal bars. I don't go down there. <laughs> I don't, I don't Nope. I mean, I've had, you know, friends come in town and you're like, okay, fine. We have to, you have to see it. You know, you got to see all the honky tonks and crap and, or people that I don't suggest it. I would never be like, Oh, you're coming to Nashville. Sweet. Friday night. We're hitting Broadway. Never. But if I have a friend or a family member or whatever that wants to do it, you, you know, you got to go do it. So I have subjected myself to that absolute shit show of just display of the worst human experience. It's just awful, dude. It's awful. Everyone I know who lives in Nashville is like the damn bachelorette parties. I think it's like more than Vegas. It's like the bachelorette capital of, of the of the United States. It's like, or the world. I don't know. But (laughs) either way, I will not go to Kid Rock's Honky Tonk with you is the answer. No, sorry. What? I know you want to go, but I'm not going to (laughs) go. That's how I feel when I lived in New York, when people be like, let's go to the Empire State Building. And once you go a few times, like the third or fourth time, I'm like, all right, you go to the top. I'll I'm going to be waiting (laughs) down here just like eating a slice of pizza or something. I'll right. see you in three hours. <laughs> right. It's not as bad as someone wanting to go to Times Square or having to go to a play. Like I love, I love going to theater, but yeah, if I could, if you could just remove the entire like 10 city block thing above ground or like outside of the theaters would be great. Yeah. I worked in Times Square for a hot second. Oof. I'm sorry. All right. Um, 
What's the craziest thing you saw on Warp Tour? Um, I don't know, man. I really don't know. Like, this is dark. Is he, like Goldfinger I, eating I, something I, out of out of I, someone's butt or something. I think. I think we were in Calgary. This is dark. What was the question? The weirdest thing. I don't. I want to know the dark thing now. Well, uh, we were. I think we were in Calgary, Canada in 2004 and this crazy windstorm whipped up while while we were playing and brought a fence down and it killed a kid in the Whoa. crowd yeah wow so it was Such a really a strange podcast. time to be on stage like they ran on stage we're like stop playing stop playing and oh so we goodness. had to we had to sit on the edge of the stage and like play just clean guitar like finish the set like not playing a full set it was it was a dark day yeah, that's like the Pearl Jam thing where like people rush the stage and they got crushed and stuff. Like, yeah, break, yeah. Break I, but I, like a like just a general, you know, wow, that was one well, another windstorm one time in Arizona or New Mexico. I think uh, less than Jake was parked next to us and they had a BM like a BMX bike tied to their tent to keep it weighed down. The wind just picked the whole thing up. The bike in, impaled our bus and then like sliced down through it so it was like there was like a gash all the way down with a bike hanging out of it when we got back to the bus <laughs> so wind i guess wind is the weirdest thing that's i saw when you, that's when you wish you had a smartphone back then yeah you know um the craziest uh thing i ever saw uh warp tour was limp biscuit <laughs> yeah this is like 96 Right before they broke in Sanford, Florida. Wow. Yeah. I was at those first those first ones too in Jacksonville at Metro Park. Uh, yeah. Like 96, 97. I, I one of those years, I think it was it was either the summer of 97 going into my senior year or it was my senior summer. I can't remember, but I like worked, I volunteered to like work at the warp tour just so I could get passes and yeah. be there. Ah, I and wish it would have done. Was, it was one of those, dude. Do you know that David Cross? Bit, do, you, do you are you a fan of David Cross? Absolutely. You know the you know the bit about um, that, that he does about um, uh, I Fourth of July or, or yeah, like light up Atlanta, where he's waiting in line for for tickets to to get. <laughs> to, he's got you got to pay money to get tickets to go buy the beer, you know, and he's like, excuse me, is this the line? for the beer for the and i can't say the rest on air but yeah. what a great bit anyways well that's what i did at warp tour the point of this whole story <laughs> and bringing up david cross is i had to sit there all day and take people's money and hand them tickets <laughs> so that did not last on the warp tour yeah sounds like it <laughs> it's such a dumb question ryan gosling or ryan reynolds gosling that's the correct answer I love them. I mean, love them both. Could have a man crush on both of them, but I mean, come on. There is only <laughs> Gosling. That's what, that's what we got to put like when we post on Instagram. There is only Gosling. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that could be the tagline for this episode. Yeah, definitely. Um, when's the last time you sent a greeting card? Multiple years, far enough back to not recall sent meaning like put it in the mail no no yeah. idea no idea like you bought it filled it out put an address on it couldn't tell you wow <laughs> all right man and Is that i think a bad this... person no 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 you're just no like a every you're no one does that anymore i would say except for me i'm at the post office a lot um greeting card guy last uh question and i think it goes with the theme of our 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 podcast Ryan, what is your defin definitive definition of hope? Do you want to call back tomorrow so I can think about it? <laughs> Jeez. For those Silly questions home, my ass. For those at home, he just he just he just rubbed his temples. Definition of hope. I mean, 
the easiest thing for me to do would be to connect it to Star Wars and the Force and all that that I subscribe to. Even though St Star Wars is a sci-fi fantasy, if you break it down and think about what is being taught through the Force, it's way better than any of the other options we have in real life, um, in my opinion. Maybe it's short of Buddhism. I don't know. But it is Buddhism, basically. But I don't know. The, that's It's all about hope. That whole story is about hope. Rebellions are built on hope. You know? I don't think you could have given a better answer. Well, may the force be with you, you know? <laughs> um, all right, man. Uh, so this is the part of the episode where you plug whatever you want to plug. Plug cool. your pod, plug your EP. Sure, sure. Yeah. Um, so uh, my my COVID survival has been my Patreon page. Um, so I, I do a live show uh, every month. I do a live Q&A every month. I'm sending out some uh exclusive music every month it's been really cool killer community of fans that have gotten together there and made their own discord server and like hang and chat and just it's just been such a cool thing um so i don't know how long i'm gonna keep it going i, I you know I, I really hope that scoring projects start to pick up and that becomes my primary focus but right now i'm making music new music and it's kind of the only way to hear it is to be on uh, to be part of the Patreon community. So um, it's patreon.com slash William Ryan Key. Cool. Um, I have a podcast with my buds. Like I said, Adam uh, Russell from Story of the Year and Nick Gambarian from Bayside and I host a show called Thank the Maker. We've been running for a year. We just hit 100,000 plays. Uh, we've had Ashley Eckstein who plays Ahsoka Tano. Uh, we've had um, uh, James Taylor who plays uh, Obi-Wan Kenobi on The Clone Wars as well. We've had uh, some some of our friends who are editors at Marvel for Star Wars on the show. Uh, we had Emily Swallow who plays the armorer uh, on The Mandalorian. Like we've it's really it's really become a crazy thing in our life, uh, and we're just like in Star Wars. Like I um, I have a friend that works at Herschel Supply Company, the backpacks and stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's my it's my favorite band hook up name drop thing I could ever that I can do because I just get free shit from Herschel and it's so awesome. I have I need to don't tell Michael this I need to like make a goodwill run because he's giving me so much crap like it's it's so awesome. But either way, I can change my backpacks like I could change my outfits, you know. Um, yeah. Anyways, he they just launched their Star Wars thing today. Herschel and Star Wars launched a collab today. Cool. Through that process, he was like, hey, do you mind if I send your info over to Lucasfilm for the podcast and stuff? I get an email yesterday from the head of, of publishing for Star Wars books at Disney saying, hey, we'd love to put you guys on our list for reviews and to interview some of our authors and all this stuff. It's like just emailing with the head of Star Wars publishing. No big deal. Like, what is what is what is life? What is happening? Uh, so if you can't tell, I'm really excited about that little podcast and you can listen to it everywhere you get podcasts. It's just called Thank the Maker. Um, we have a Patreon for the for the podcast as well where you get like kind of just, I don't know, after show videos and get to vote on polls and submit content and stuff. Um, but if you listen to the show, we plug that so you can uh, you can check it out. But if you're a Star Wars fan, it's a lot of fun. And if you're in the music scene as well, it's even more fun because uh, we have a lot of our music friends have been on the show as well, too, from bands and, and things. So um, it's just cool. It's a good hang. So thank the maker. Cool, and man. We'll definitely uh, link it um, in the bio. And um, I've I listened to podcasts voraciously so cool i will definitely check it out and i love star wars and you got to get lavar burton on there harrison ford mark hamill is like the that's that's the he does know, a lot of he does know, a lot of i know stuff. that's why that's why i can say it without sounding completely ridiculous because we've had people we've had real mega star wars people on the show so it's like we're get, we're getting closer just gotta have, get just, have you tweeted him all the time, but dude, I have screenshots every time he likes my tweet. I have it. I have it saved. Oh my goodness, that's amazing, dude. dude uh, two thousand. When was this? This was I don't know, probably five years ago now. I can't remember, but um, I was at Hollywood Studios in Florida, uh -huh. watching the Star Wars Celebration Summer or what a Summer of Star Wars they called it or something fireworks show that they like. It, it was super sick, but I was watching that, and in that moment, got an alert on my phone star wars the account the twitter account followed me and at that time they followed like 
141 people or something and they followed me and it, I like it was like that's it I don't I'm done. I don't know am I homeless now because I don't think I can work I, I'm done that's <laughs> I peaked it's over they don't follow me anymore I don't know why I don't know what happened they unfollowed um, you yeah bro I don't do anything controversial on my my page either like it's all business it's all like my have you ever tweeted and own. asked them uh, when it first happened, I think I posted a photo, a screenshot of when they did and a screenshot of them, of it not saying follows you anymore. Wow. And I was said something like, tell me if I did something wrong, I won't, I'll, I'll, I'll make it up to you or whatever. But no, nope, nothing. Oh, man. Someone new must have taken over and just cleaned house or something. I don't know. Yeah, maybe someone else took over the social. Yeah. But I had it for a minute, you know, I was on a short list of people that Star Wars thought it would be a good idea to to add to their list i feel felt like really, i'm gonna really tweet, nice i'm gonna tweet right after this at, at them be like you need <laughs> to, to follow me again <laughs> ryan key again come on okay. <laughs> please oh, i'll take all the help i can get all right man a lot of clout for the podcast if i can get followed again yeah man can't thank you enough and uh, i know my producer is smiling her face off right now <laughs> And well, of um, course, it was yeah, man. A great hang. It was a great hang, man. Thanks, for Thanks, having Dan, me. so much, dude. And yeah. this was so much fun. Can't thank you enough. Yeah, of course, dude. Look forward to listening. I don't even miss you at all this time. Think I'm finally letting these vultures fly. First time you strip me down naked and bare bone will look at me now. You dig holes in your sacred ground, wait to watch them circling around. But you're not here on some mission from God, you're just making up for what you never got. Is it better to have had or to have none? Looking for alibis, feeding on your answers with vultures' eyes. Truth is still a potion you can't keep down. Guess you'll have to swallow it forever now. You dig holes in your sacred ground, wait to watch them circling around. But you're not here on some mission from God You're just making up for what you never got Is it better to have had or to have not? Is it better to have had or to